Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Stand with me today. We, um, we only have one service this morning, actually this Sunday, and we don't want to waste it. And I want to encourage you to get involved in the service. Time is passing us by. And we got a whole week ahead of us. Amen, amen, amen. And God has been good to us. He really has. He really has. And there's nothing better to do on a Sunday than to worship the Lord. I can't think of anything better to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So good to see so many new faces in the audience and so good to see the church family and friends. Amen. What a great atmosphere we've had. It's warmed up a little bit. Praise God. We've made it through that storm. That's kind of how storms are. They pass. They really do. And we get into the season and the spirit of the season and the feeling of the season. And it, I love the way the Lord kind of talks to us through seasons and holidays and festivals. And, and he handles themes with us. And we're entering into December. This is our first service in December. And and I felt such a neat burden this morning, um, something I haven't quite felt like this before. And uh, we just have a good time this afternoon, talk to the Lord. And I'm just going to read two verses, and you'll kind of get it when I give you the title that we're going to have an interesting afternoon in Jesus. Amen. We're headed towards Christmas. We're headed towards 2017. My goodness, 2016 is leaving us. We're going to be rolling up the vision banner in a few weeks. I remember when we unfolded that. Wow. And now we're about to roll that back up. Amen. And a new vision is coming. And we're going to enjoy 2017. <sighs> but let's read. Out of the book of 1 Kings, chapter number 19, verse number 12 and 13. The Bible says, and after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. He was not in the earthquake, or he, and he wasn't in the storm or the wind. And after the fire, a still, small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. He, he kind of changed his plans. And behold, there came a voice unto him. And said, what doest thou here, Elijah? What a change in the pace of his purpose. The Lord wasn't in the wind. He wasn't in the earthquake. He wasn't in the storm. He wasn't in the fire. His voice was not in any of that. But there was a still, small voice. And that voice, when it was heard, gave him complete and clear directions. It was very noisy in Elijah's life. Is that safe to say? The elements were at its worst. Amen. I don't think you heard me. I said it was very noisy. And the elements were at its worst. Anybody ever been there? 
In the midst of all of that, at the same time, the noise was blaring. The Lord was talking. My Lord. And I just want to talk about that a little bit, and I guess we'll title this lesson today, The Black Friday Generation. I know none of y'all was out there, but. Oh, look at the guilt all riddled through the, my Lord. The Black Friday generation, and I'll talk to you about it a little bit, but before we do that, put down your tablets and Bibles and cell phones and everything else that we use to gather the word and just kind of lift your hands. And Lord, let there be a clarity in this place today. Let us hear your voice today. Lord, we pray that you would move today. Why don't we just ask the Lord once again, Lord, speak into my life. Everybody here can use a word from the Lord today. Everybody here would love to hear a word from their Father in heaven. Why don't you ask him, Lord, give me a word today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come on, we're going to take a few moments. I'm not going to preach long. Just, Lord, clear my thoughts from everything that's been clouding my judgment. Go ahead and ask him. Clear my, I don't want to think about work for 30 minutes. I don't want to think about the bills for 30 minutes. I don't want to think about the pain in my body. I don't want to think about the trial I'm in. I don't want to think about the folks that's coming against me. Lord, just let there be a clarity Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Why don't we worship him for a moment? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Somebody worship him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. The Black Friday generation. Just a few days ago, there was mass mania in the Americas. Around the country, people were being clawed and bitten and kicked and stomped on at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., when they should have been nestled in their bed, sleeping. Instead, they were attacking their fellow man for a toy or a cell phone or a remote control car or, God forbid, somebody's purse, they were willing to kill to save $3. <laughs> it's not necessarily what is happening, but the mindset of what is happening. We kind of can get caught up in what is going on to the point where we're so caught up that we are just on automatic pilot. I mean, who convinced us to get involved in Black Friday? Who came up with that diabolical plan? Now, I remember I haven't celebrated the holiday of Black Friday in years. I'm at home. Sometime I'll turn on the internet and just watch the American people posting people kicking doors in and stomping on store clerks and pushing convenience store workers out of the way and stampeding. I've watched all of that on the Internet. Uh, but I do remember some years ago, me and some of the young people who are now probably hyphen or young couples, we decided to venture in on a Black Friday. And we stood in line at what was then Value City, who has left us in Michigan, 
We see anybody remember Value City? We stood in line from midnight till four or five in the morning to save maybe twenty dollars. And the whole time I'm thinking, who has corrupted my thinking? Who has tricked me? What am I doing here? And then you, you're trapped. You think about getting out of the line. But then you realize you have invested four hours. And you say, I'm going to finish this. I can hear the sound of the cash register. I can see there may be a teller a mile down the road that we might get to. And you meet people and you converse with people. And it's crazy. It's noisy. It's wild. I wonder sometimes if we get caught up in that kind of situation to the point where we are a culture of craziness when it comes to time. The Bible said that in the last days they're going to be running to and fro in the earth. They're going to be busy. They're going to be rushing. They won't have time. And we've been given convenience in products and technology, but it has seemed to have made us busier. They, they told us this was going to help our way of life. But 30 years ago, it seemed like life was better and simpler. And you had time for things that you didn't now. Now they can find you everywhere. You used to could say I wasn't home when you called. Now you're always reachable because they stuck that cell phone in our life. Or you could have had a busy signal because you, your, your mother was talking to her girlfriend on the other line. And when you were younger, you're waiting and waiting and waiting. But you had a freedom of technology. Technology has been taking from us our humanity. Sometimes I wonder if we're not becoming robots. We are so dependent on things. It's almost as if the noise is taking control of our lives. You know, when we talk about noise, there's something to it spiritually. There's something to all of this. It, it, I'm not even yet convinced that it's not a diabolical plot of the enemy to keep us so busy that we don't have time for the most important things in life. I, I get convicted every time... We get towards December because I start thinking, I got to spend time with my kids. I got to spend time with my wife. I got to spend time with my family. I got to go see mama. I got to, you start thinking about all the things we have neglected the other 11 months of the year because we've been busy. And it might be a plot from the enemy because the most important thing we can find ourselves neglecting is a prayer life. I heard a, a rumor that Facebook is taking over our prayer lives. That we can spend five hours on Facebook and it only gives us five minutes in the prayer room. There's something to the noise. There's something to the chaos where it might be taking from us the most important things in life. Often I pay attention to interviews with people who have lived a long time and before they pass away, last sayings. And it's kind of interesting that I have found out that most everyone, when you ask them if they have any regrets, most everybody, I would say 99% confesses, I wish I had spent time more time with family, more time with the Lord, more time with loved ones. 
they confess that they wish they had spent more time with the people in their lives. Living regret. And you would think it would be a different topic, but it really isn't. It goes back to what is the most important things. I wonder if we get through this, if we won't regret the things we could have did for the Lord. The things we could have did for the kingdom. The things we should have did for the Lord. But we let something cloud it out in the noise. I remember when I was a youth specialist, and I was a youth specialist for some time, and we used to minister at juvenile homes and things of that nature. And then I was a minister in the prisons. We would go to the prisons, and we would spend time there, and we'd be ministering there, and we'd do it every week. We would get up on Sunday morning, and I would go out to the juvenile homes before morning service and get back to morning service because Bishop wanted you in church. So we would get up early and go out before service into the juvenile homes and minister to the kids and feed them real good and pray for them. And, and even in the prison systems, you find out that there's a lot of focus in institutions like that in religion. Now, you find out now some of them, of course, might focus on things that may not be the truth, but there is a focus on religious things. There's a, a focus on something greater than we are. I used to think that that focus came exclusively because people were regretting that they got caught. That's what I used to think. I used to think, you know, these folks are all wanting to come in here to church because they're just wanting it to be seen that they're trying to better themselves. Or people are trying to come into the Bible study we're having because they're sorry that they got caught or they're sorry that they got into the mess they're in. They're remorseful. But then God got to talking to me about it, and he said, no, that's not really, that's really not it. He said, the fact is, in institutions like that, it's less noisy. And he said, the quieter it is, the quieter it gets, the louder you can hear your soul. You didn't hear me. We're in a loud world, and I believe the devil wants it that way. Because the quieter it gets, the more you can hear your soul saying, Feed me. Remember me. Don't forget eternity and that he could come any day for you. Tomorrow's not promised. This world is not your home. You start hearing stuff like that, and it pulls you into a spiritual state of mind. You ever find out that when people want to block something out, they turn things up? in elementary school too. One child's picking on the other child so that one child goes la la, la 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 la. I think there's something to all of this. I think we are under a diabolical plot where the enemy is doing his best to get us to forget about the most important things. And if he's got to give you a cell phone, he'll give you a cell phone. If he's got to give you a brand new car, he'll give you a brand new car. If you need a job, let me tell you something about a job. If the job is taking you away from God, it is a diabolical plot from the devil. The Lord told me to tell somebody that. I don't know who that was for. I don't know who that was for. Anything that takes you away from the perfect will of God for you is a diabolical plot from the enemy. But life is good. But I just got blessed. Look at your blessings very carefully. The Lord's not the only one that knows how to give gifts. Some gifts are Trojan horses. 
And for our young people to know, the Trojan horse was wheeled into the country, and they thought it was a gift, but inside was a murderous curse. And we need to always take a moment and examine, is this really a blessing to me? Is this really helping me with what is the most important thing for me? Can I tell you, it is never too late to make a turnaround. It is never, you know when it's too late? When we're putting dirt over the casket. Until then, you can turn around and say, I am going to give the Lord of my life the glory he deserves. Jesus does talk to us. The devil is a lie. I said Jesus does talk to you. He is not hiding from you. He is trying his best to reach us, and he's talking all the time. Perhaps the problem in the conversation is us. We have to understand the fact that without a miraculous appearing, which is what we all want, but you may not get that, the spirit is constantly reaching. It's just that we have so much going on, we are not listening. Remember when the Lord was trying to reach Moses? Bible says that Lord, the Lord struck up a bush that burned, but the fire didn't consume it. And when he saw that Moses turned to look at the bush that burned, when it got his attention, the Lord called to him. In other words, he had to get his attention. But the Bible tells us verses before that, Moses was very content with his life. Being content with your life does not mean that your life is in God's will. I don't know about you, but I will not rest and be happy and content until I am 100% in the will of God for my life. Somebody help me with that right now. Anybody feel that way this morning? Are there anybody that still loves him this morning? No matter how noisy and loud our lives get, can you cry out to him right now and say, I need thee, oh, I need thee. When Moses turned aside, it doesn't just noise, doesn't just have to be loud. It can be soothing because Moses was happy. I once had a new convert tell me, which was a revelation to me. He said, I didn't have a need when I came to God. I said, you didn't? I had a whole bunch of them. He said, I didn't have a need. He said, I didn't necessarily need finances. I didn't necessarily need some kind of help with debt or some kind of immoral situation or, or some kind of, I wasn't in bondage. I just felt my need for him. I said, well, that's interesting. Because there are some people that are very happy with their life. They are content. But contentment can be just as loud as a trial. Oh, y'all didn't hear me this morning. Y'all didn't hear me this morning. I want to tell you that a blessing uh, that you think is a blessing can calm you as loud as a trial can alarm you. But when he saw Moses turn, he said, oh, my goodness, he's looking. Moses. Moses said, Ooh, who's that? The fact is that Jesus is constantly talking. He's constantly talking. 
The question is, are we really listening? Are we really listening for the voice of God? I found out when I understood these things, I found out that this is testable. This works. Sure it does. Go somewhere, sit, turn everything off, just you and him. Sit there as long as it takes. You will hear from him. I just felt doubt and I felt the spirit in this house. Let me tell you. Here's what we don't like, Black Friday generation. I said, go somewhere, sit there. Got time for that? I lost you when I said sit there. Do you know that you can sit in front of your laptop for hours and forget about the time? Do you know that subconsciously you literally say, okay, you get everybody out the way. Okay, okay, I got to do something. And you're there and then you'll look. It's already time to go. Whether it's work, which can be noisy, or contentment, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Yeah, you can be on there, clear everybody out, and you just go at it. Like, 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 oh, like, like, like. Lie, 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 lie. Share, share, share. Looking to see who liked. Uh huh. They didn't like my stuff again. I got you. So you go back to theirs and unlike there, unlike, 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 I got you. <laughs> There's a war going on. There's a war going on. It's very interesting. And here's what we got to understand about the Lord is it requires time. To be with the Lord. It, you can, you can, you can, we can fight about this if you want to. But I'm just going to tell you. It requires time. You don't have to like it. But it, it you know, it, it's kind of a shame. When we get mad about the Lord asking for five minutes. But we can watch a movie for two hours. That's not right. It's the Black Friday generation. You can't tell me, oh, no, no, let, let me switch that. You can't tell him you are serious about spending time with him, and yet he'll look at your calendar and he'll see, well, they spent 24 hours doing this and they gave me three seconds. You understand that it, it puts us in an awkward position when we say, oh, God, I need thee. Like, really, you said hello yesterday. Today you said goodbye. Tomorrow you said two oh lords and and where are you? Where are you, God? <laughs> Who is that? Did they just call me? <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> what is that? I said Jesus, and the car disappeared and reappeared on the other side of the lane. That was his mercy. That had nothing to do with y'all's relationship. 
What has to do with the relationship is you saying that when there's not an emergency. We are, we have to understand that we are creatures of connection. And we all got to work, I got to work on this. I, I, my, my deal for 2017 is I want to be more connected to God. Ooh, somebody help me. Anybody with me? Let's do this. Let's rush the throne this year. Let's flood the gates of heaven this year. We are creatures of connection, and you, let me give you some things the Lord told me to tell you this morning. He told me to tell you this. He said, tell the international church, he said, tell them that people that don't pray will never understand me. Did you hear it? The Lord said, if you don't pray, you'll never understand him. You never will. If you don't have a conversation with him, You'll never understand his point of view. You'll never understand how he feels about something. So you, you have to talk with him about that. You have to have a, a conversation with the master. You really do. You, you have to do that. And if you don't hang around him, you will never get a hold of holiness. Okay? So he told me to tell you, I don't, I, I, I'm just reading what, I wrote it down so that I wouldn't mess it up. Because when daddy says something, we write it down and don't mess it up. He says, when, the more you're hanging around him, you'll get the hang of holiness. It's the truth. It, 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 it makes sense, though. We're in a generation now where we are less connected because we have a robot as mediators. Our mediators are machines and programs. For example, when you text somebody, it's easier to be offended at each other. Why? Because you're letting a robot do the talking and they're gathering the spirit of the conversation from digits on a pad somewhere. When you sit down with someone, you can reason together. And when you reason together, you can understand, you can feel the, see, here's what, here's what technology does. And I'm not against technology, but I want you to understand what's happening. Because there's division in the church because of the social stuff. There really is. If you want to fix it, go talk to them. It'll get fixed just like that. But you keep it on, on social media or text messages or whatever, you'll stay divided forever because you won't ever get, get each other. Okay? You getting this, young people? Don't let technology bridge you with relationships. Do it personally. It's very important. Now, here's, let me get back to this. Here's why technology is dangerous. Technology removes your soul from the connection. Okay? When I'm talking to you, I can feel your soul. I can feel your spirit in a situation. I can feel you. I, can, I get you. We can come together and connect when we're in person. Even a phone call is better than digits. Not perfect, but it's better. But we're we're taking ourselves out of the relationship. So we got to get this because we're taking ourselves also out of our relationship with the Lord if we don't connect with him. See, prayer connects us with him. It knits us together. There's a spirit flowing through America that is confusing people on prayer. There is a spirit that is attacking Christians and secular people saying, I don't understand why we have to pray. And then there's people who think they're smart who have no clue what being smart's all about. 
will tell you, I don't understand why we have to pray to an all-powerful, all-knowing God. He should just get me. Not true. You were made in God's image and after his likeness, and you can't live in a cave somewhere by yourself. There has to be connection. So if you want to have a relationship with God, you've got to connect with him. And when we connect with him, we will have a relationship with him. And we will have understanding of the ways of God. We will have that understanding. There's a difference between an acquaintance and a friend. Why is that that way? You have more invested in a friendship. That's the difference. That works spiritually. It works spiritually. Some of us have found ourselves just in an acquaintance with God and not a friendship. And God is wanting this message to get to us and say, you're caught up in the Black Friday generation. And you got to get back to the basics and say, I've got to sit down with God. I, I, I've got to sit down with the Lord. I mean, think about it, folks. Even in December. Now, I don't want to mess with, make anybody upset. Don't get mad at me today. It's a good day. Heat's on. Except for the pregnant ladies. I mean, it's getting worse for you. But, but I mean, think about it. Even in December, we say it's about Christ. We say we are Christians. We say that Christmas is his day. But there's, there's a little challenge in our soul when we say, well, we're going to, since Christmas is on Sunday, we're going to have church. Ooh. You see, I was going to cook breakfast. I was going to walk around in my, my PJs and my robe and rollers in my head, and here he go. Open presents and sip some chocolate. That was graphic, wasn't it? But, you know. And I'm going to confess, I even had a little thought about it when the Lord mentioned it to me. He said, y'all having church on Christmas, right? I said, ooh. <laughs> Jesus, forgive me. I even went to the calendar. That's on Sunday. Lord, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Well, I mean, think about it. it sometimes we can get caught up. You know, the decorations and the traditions and somebody's cooking something that tastes good. And, you know, I mean, we, we're putting things on the house. And, you know, I get it. I get it. We get all caught up and, and we get into all of this stuff. But, but are we acknowledging the reason for the season? That the Lord of all the earth wrapped himself in flesh, came. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost came down in a lonely manger and died for us all. I mean, you know, I get it. I, I you know, I, I know what Christmas is all about. It's the Lord's birthday. We celebrate his birthday on that day. It was, he wasn't born, he, he wasn't born on December 25th. Okay, calm down. <laughs> this is when we celebrate it. Leave me alone. So, but I get it. It's his birthday, but you know, I mean, it's better now, but I've had some birthdays. In comes the little kitties, the Laura, Mariah, Michaela. And every bit of the birthday planning was for them, not me. That was, it's not that way now, but when they were little, it was, you know, you know how they are. They come in five, six, seven, or whatever. We're we going to go here for your birthday. I'm like, really? That's wonderful. I hope you all enjoy my birthday. Sister Wilson, I'm gonna, we're going to go to your favorite restaurant, so you're not cooking. <laughs> how much for my birthday? How much it cost? 
Better leave them a tip. Look at all the men. They're like. You enjoying your birthday, Daddy? You know what we're going to do for the Lord's birthday? We're going to focus on him. We are. How about it? Let's make it about him. Every bit of it, every aspect of it. Let's, let's outdo ourselves this year. I mean, let's make this right. Let's dress up. Don't just fall in here, put on something that you like, and come in here, tell your kids we go into the house of the Lord. It's a, it's a premium event. It's, it's his birthday. It's celebrating God's birth. There's no telling what God will do. And I know we pray for miracles and we pray for healing and we pray for deliverance and we pray for all these things. And Come on, Brother Ryan, we got to quit. It's Sunday school's ready to get out of here. They're all downstairs practicing. We'll have a great time next week. But we, we pray about all these things and all these needs and we, we, we asking God constantly for things. We're constantly barraging heaven with prayer requests and we're looking up every hour of the day going, Jesus, did you see this? I mean, we're there, right? We're always asking, asking. But what if today we just, Lord, your presence is heaven to me. Anybody ever find yourself saying, Lord, if they take everything, just don't take your presence. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Mother Yolanda. I needed that. I want to be closer to the Lord. I really do. And I just, I just wanted conviction. I want to be, I'm convicted this morning. I, I want to be convicted. I want to, let's be convicted to remember what this is all about. And I mean, I'm looking at the stampedes on the internet I mean, us Americans are, we're, we're something else. It's Black Friday. We're running around, going crazy. Folks are running around, got two, two things under each arm. Their eyes all look like they've been medicated. I'm like, my Lord, what have we become? But I want to remind you, the Lord will not be in the noise. He's not going to compete. You, you, you need to hear me. He's not going to compete with our stuff. Not going to do it. He's not going to compete with your trial either. And we really need this because we could even make the trial the focus of our life. But I'll never forget what David did. He quit looking at Goliath. And he started looking at God. He found out God was bigger than Goliath. You ain't seen a giant. I know the lion of the tribe of it. He said, I've been with him. I'm not worried about you, Goliath. I've been with him. I know in whom I've believed. I know in whom I've believed. I know him. I spent some time with him. I, everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. Why don't you stand with me? We're going to quit. If our praise singers could come up, you know, we're just going to have a little time of a prayer closest. If God's will was to be accomplished in this place this morning, it would be that every one of us acknowledged our need for him and our willingness, our willingness to step away from the noise. He's talking all the time.
really is. He's saying amazing things. Constantly speaking to you. You missed a lot of good stuff God was talking to you about. You wasn't listening. There's folks talking to me and sometimes they go, Pastor, you listen to me? I'm like, where am I? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Our, we can, our minds can wander a little bit. God's telling us, good. God's got, he's, he's already prophesied to you about that situation. You just didn't hear him. You tell him to speak again, Lord. Woo! Speak again, Lord. Speak again, Lord. Your servant heareth. I wonder how many would come up to the front. What if we went back and said, you know what? I'm going to make this statement when I get back home. And sometime this week, I'm going to say, I'm going to spend time with the Lord. You know, you could come up to the church and be a part of the prayer here at the church. Elder Mother McCray got the doors open every day. You come on up. I'm going up to the house of the Lord. I'm fixing to go spend time with the Lord. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to think about any more of the noise. I'm going to spend some time with the Lord. And you say, speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. Woo! wonder if we could just lift our hands. Lord, let your presence challenge us today. Your presence.